Just an Israeli airstrike has destroyed the consular section of Iran's embassy in Syria. At this hour, it's believed that at least two Iranian generals and five officers in its Revolutionary Guard Corps were killed. Syria's foreign minister is calling the airstrike unjustified, while the U.S. maintains that Israel has the right to self-defense. Israel is surrounded by entities that are sworn to its destruction, not just Hamas, but Iran uh, and proxy groups that Iran sponsors, uh, Hezbollah among them, who have repeatedly talked about their desire for the destruction of Israel. We believe Israel has every right to defend itself against those opponents. Iranian state media said one of the dead is Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a senior commander in the IRGC. Tehran believes he was the target of the attack. Iran's ambassador to Syria, who was not injured, said the incident will not remain without response. Israel, Israel has repeatedly hit Iranian targets during their six-month war against Hamas amid ongoing clashes with Hezbollah on the Israel-Lebanon border. Israel declined to comment on today's incident. And news of today's airstrike came as the world got its first look at the remnants of Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital following a 14-day siege by the Israeli Defense Forces. A warning that some of the visuals in the story will be disturbing. Images show significant destruction and bulldozing at the hospital site. At least 300 bodies have been found so far. Distress and anger from Palestinians today after the Israeli military withdrew from Gaza's main hospital following a two-week raid, saying it killed some 200 militants and detained hundreds more. Citizens making quick work to look for and move any patients left by Israeli forces. Once the largest medical center in Gaza, Palestinians who returned to Shifa Hospital today found its building heavily burned and damaged with bodies inside and outside the facility. Stark before and after images vividly show the devastation after the Israeli military's two-week raid. Hospitals enjoy special protected status under the international laws of war, but they can lose that status if they are used for military purposes. The Prime Minister confirmed, and I quote, Our forces operated there in, exe in an exemplary fashion. Shifa has become a main terrorism command center for Hamas. The surprise action by our forces was precise and surgical. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the latest raid on Shifa was launched because senior Hamas operatives had regrouped there and were planning attacks. Meantime, the Director General of the World Health Organization said that according to information the United Nations agency received, 21 patients died after Israel's second siege of Shifa began on March 18th. The UN says it is planning a mission to Shifa as quickly as possible to help Palestinians receive medical attention and to assess the state of the hospital. As for humanitarian assistance, the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, known as UNRWA, reported no significant change in the low level of supplies entering Gaza in March. From March 1st to March 30th, an average of 159 aid trucks crossed into Gaza every day, far below the target of 500 trucks per day needed to improve the dire humanitarian conditions. UNRWA reporting today that despite this, more than 1.8 million people, 85% of Gaza's population, received flour and 600,000 received emergency food parcels in March. Following Israel's perceived success at Shifa, Netanyahu said the next step is to eliminate Hamas battalions in Rafah. More than 70% of Gaza's population is currently sheltering in the small border town. As well, Netanyahu is vowing to immediately shut down Qatari-owned satellite broadcaster Al Jazeera after Israel's parliament passed a law clearing the way for the country to halt the channel from broadcasting from Israel.